then. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buyer merch. Buyer merch, indeed. Y'all shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, it was me. We have another band, another song for the, for from our DJ, DJ Chad. The big the homie Osbournes, Chad. The Osbournes. The whole family is out watching tonight. Shout out to Utah, <laughs> he was by the like, way. If you guys are good with being a late night thing, the Osbournes are good with it. We're, we're good with it. Here we are. <laughs> Shout out to the Osbournes. Shout All out right. to the Osbournes. Shout out to Utah. So, we've got Sleep Token up next with The Apparition. Is there a little uh, thing I'm There is not. There's not just. All right, the apparition is the name of the band. And um, no, 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 the name of the band is Sleep Token. Sleep Token is the name of the band. What am I talking about? Sleep then, Token is the name of the band, dear listener. The name Don't of the listen song to me. is the apparition. The name of the song is uh, yeah. There's Chad. He's ready. Let's go. It's gonna be another exciting one. Chad, I'm so glad. I'm very excited to hear more White Chapel. Is this, this it right here? No, this is Sleep Token, right? Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit out of order. The apparition, yeah, the apparition right there. Yep, right that's there. it. We in, we, in, we in this bitch. Yeah, we know what we're doing. Why are you never real Whenever you appear You leave me with that grace I am trembling with fear But I know That you will disappear Just as I awake A whisper in my ear I believe it's somewhere in the past Something was between you and I, my dear And it remains with me to this day No matter what I do, the scar will never fade
man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to just, I need to go play that right now on YouTube so it doesn't, oh no, it's going to be in the stream thing so I can come back to it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, I figured that would be your jam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. I really, really enjoyed that one. I liked the beat of it. I liked the, I, I don't think that, like, the drum work was necessarily, like, crazy, but I liked following the drums mm -hmm. in it. Um, and, like, just the overall vibe of the song, especially, like, the way that it started, it kind of had, like, this ominous feel to it, like, um, and then it kind of reminded me of some, like, dark synth a little bit in there. Uh, I, I, I really liked it. Yeah, really, that really, really hip-hop really type it. beat uh, thing that's, like, you know I say, like, I wish you would bring some of that R&B yeah. that you listen to our music, like, it would I'm definitely sure modernize, it would definitely modernize the sound. Um... But damn, they, they did a really, really, really good job, this band. Was it Sleep Token is Sleep the name of the Token, band? Sleep Token, the apparition, yeah, wow. Uh, what do you he, think this was a last minute switch, too. He, this wasn't on the docket, but he <laughs> switched at the last second. Yeah, this is going to be one of the stories. <laughs> yep. uh, it's adding, It's going to my playlist. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to go to the playlist like crazy, for sure. For sure. Oh my gosh. Okay, so lyrically, why are you never real whenever you appear? Oh, no. Okay. That's right. I forgot that's how it started. You leave me yeah, with that it's, grace. It's uh, the apparition. Yeah, the apparition. Yeah. yeah. I am trembling with fear, but I know that you will disappear just as I awake. Whisper in my ear. Wait. So it's a bad one. You leave me with that grace. That's interesting because then it says I am trembling with fear, but I know that you will disappear. I think it's a girl that he's in love with that he's that he can't he can't be with. Oh, so you don't think it, it's really... Okay, well, I believe somewhere in the past something was between you and I, my dear, and it remains with me to this day. No matter what I do, this scar will never fade. Mm -hmm. So let's make trouble in the dream world. <laughs> Hijack heaven with another memory now. I make the most of the turning tide. It's just split what's left of the burning silence. Don't wait, because this could be the last time. You turn up the reveries of my mind. You turn up in the reveries of my mind. I wake up to a suicide frenzy. Loaded dreams still leave me empty. I believe somewhere in the past, somewhere, something was between you and I, my dear. Okay. Why are you never real? The shifting states you follow me through unrevealed. Just let me go or take me with you. I think the person is... You think they're dead? I think they died. Right. That's okay. So yeah, because why are you never real whenever you appear? You leave me with that grace. I am trembling with fear, but I know that you will disappear just as I awake. So he's trembling with fear, not because it's a ghost or an apparition, or because I think he's trembling because he knows she's just an apparition and she's gonna leave as soon as he wakes up. Yeah, I didn't take that literally. I just took it as she's not the person he thought he thought she was going to be or that they're in some sort of like close to quasi type relationship status but she keeps pulling away or showing that she's not who he thought she was he says why are you never real so like you know you could take that literally like she's not real because she's an apparition or you could take it as she's not being straightforward with him she's not being honest with him etc etc Whenever you appear, you leave me with that grace. So, like, she's in and out of his life type of thing, like an apparition. I'm trembling with fear, but I know that you will disappear. Like, yeah, but he said... <clears throat> oh, hold on. Just as I wake, whisper in my ear. Like, again, like, he could be saying it literally, or he could be saying that this is a girl of his dreams, but he, she's, she's He's unattainable for whatever reason. And so, in that sense, she's an apparition. He says, just let me go or take me with you. Yeah, I think that's his way of saying, "Don't talk to me ever again," or "Let's be in a relationship." But he can't. He can't stand being in the. He can't stand being in the in between. Is what it looked like to me. And I I didn't take this as like, he literally is talking about an apparition. I think he's talking about the concept of being in a relationship with this person, and she's in and out of his life, kind of like a like when she appears and as in like when she pays attention to him or whatever mm -hmm. like it's great but then she fades out of his life as soon as he starts getting attached to her mm -hmm. and he wants to be completely rid of any attachment to her for obvious reasons mm -hmm. um okay yeah i can see he says, that 
I believe somewhere in the past something was between you and I, my dear, and it remains with me to this day. No matter what I do, this scar will never fade. So, again, he's saying right there, we did have something, we did have something real. He says somewhere in the past something was between you and I. So, they did have a, a sort of relationship. But again, because she's so inconsistent and in and out, he's saying just cut the whole thing off then well so what do you make of okay so he says let's make trouble in the dream world hijack heaven with another memory now i make the most of the turning tide i just split what's left of the burning silence like so uh, again i just think she is the girl of his dreams just as i wake whisper in my ear she's a girl of his dreams and so he's saying let's make trouble in the dream world hijack heaven with another memory now mm -hmm. Right, he, he's there's something that's keeping them apart, and so I'm so literalizing this. Well, of course, it's called apparition. You you can you can literalize. Yeah, it. I think it's I'm okay. sticking with that literal. Like I think that she she died, and that he's saying, "Let's make trouble in the dream world. Hijack heaven with another memory now." So he knows he's going to the dream world, but he's going to hijack heaven with another memory with her because he's trying to connect with her in his dreams. I make the most of the turning tide. I just split what's left of the burning silence. Ugh. Don't wait, because this could be the last time you turn up in the reveries of my mind. So I think that in his dreams, like, when she shows up, he wants to make the most of it. Because he knows she's going to, she's going to, he's going to wake up and she's not going to be there. Loaded dreams still leave me empty. Damn. But yeah, I could see it could go, it really could go both ways. It could be like literally the person died, or it could be that... You know, it's it's not a relationship that's really real. Like you said, they're not really um, connecting. And when she comes, she's half there, half gone. She leaves him with that grace. Yeah, I, I just think that he's... Uh, Dang. I, I think he's... He's comparing her to an apparition because an apparition is something mm -hmm. you can see, but you cannot get you your arms around. Yeah, you can't get it. And yeah she can he can see her but he can never get his arms around her because whatever is 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 impeding their their relationship or whatever he wants with her mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so in that sense she kind of becomes an apparition i mean you know it's a constant thing like people people idealize the thing that they can't have and yep. like yep that's true i was listening to this thing yesterday i forgot who came up with this with this idea I think it was Fermi I forgot who he was but he he, he essentially said who's what, Fermi uh, or what, what philosopher, is he philosopher scientist okay. um, I haven't talked to you about him yeah I was like that's new um, but like he, he's kind of most famously known for the Fermi paradox like if extraterrestrials are real why haven't they why haven't they showed up but like oh. I'm not sure if it's him but he essentially said if you could imagine a world where anything that you wanted was given to you. Eventually, and you had eternity. Eventually, you would desire the specific life you have right now. So like, the person's like, what? What are you talking about? So he's saying, look, if, if, let's, what do you want? Oh, I want, such an I want, I want, a, ending. I want a billion dollars and I want to be a rock star. What, what he's saying is, okay, if you had forever, eventually you would get tired of being a billionaire or a rock star. Mm -hmm. So then you want something else. Well, I want to be a pilot. You would keep wanting things. And then it would be like, well, it would be too easy for you because you're bored. Right? Like, this is kind of what Jonathan was going through and got the life. Everything is now handed to him because he's a famous rock star. And that is upsetting him. <laughs> so he's saying, give me something that's real. That's, that's, that's what he says before he goes into the chorus. And so, like, the idea is... If you got everything you absolutely ever wanted to the max as soon as you wanted it, you would eventually get to the point where you would end up going full circle and then desiring the life that you have right now. So, like, after you've, like, exhausted all of those other desires or whatever, the only thing left for you would be to have just for the sake of variation, a quote, normal life, which is a life that you have right now. So it's kind of like well, a like a full circle type type thing. I thought it was a very I, interesting, like, paradox. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's really interesting. I think that 
Well, people people will be children, obviously, and then they grow, and then you'll hear people keep looking back to their childhood. Yeah. And, like, reminiscent of those days, the teenage years, the young, whatever, like. Right. So maybe it's kind of like, it's kind of like a version of that, you know what I'm saying? You want me to just have some, you want to go out there with him? Oh. Uh, well, we're almost done this review, okay. so go ahead. Yeah, so kind of, like, reminded me of that. Honey, can you go in there with him? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Handle it. Just take care of it. Yep. Take care of it. You got it. Take it off. Yeah, like, I, I don't... No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's almost like a mini version of that. Like, I think that that's, that's really an interesting thought that you could go out there and just have everything and do all of these things and then you would just, like, you know... What did he base that off of? Where would... Do you know? No, nah, yeah. I, it wasn't Great. some big longitudinal study. It was just this guy's philosophy, um, and I thought I thought it was very very interesting. I'm not sure if it's true, but like it does. When you think about like the the, the mysterious like unattainable desire that 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 people have, where they always want something that they can't mm-hmm. have, it, you know, it, it's one of those things. Like, is is there some sort of lack? Am I missing actually actually missing something, or is it just the nature of being human to always want something else? So that that was kind of like one of the things that he was trying to. Because if you're hungry, if you're hungry, that that represents an actual objective lack of something. Yeah. But like, if you have this burning desire for this person, and it's not a necessity to keep you alive, then what is fueling that that desire? And is that just intrinsic to being a human being? Um, or did we evolve that way? Or did God make us that way? You know, I mean, people are going to theologize that and say, oh, you have a God-shaped hole, and that's why, you know, whatever. But, like, even outside of a Christian worldview, like, that seems to be the case that people can never be satisfied with whatever that they have. And so it's like... But the, 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 my, the problem of that paradox, though, is to say, like, that lack of satisfaction creates a lot of misery. Yep. But that lack of satisfaction also creates. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, that's one of the yeah. kind of, like, the principles of Atlas Shrugged, where it's like, I want to be better. I want to accumulate more things. I want to make money. I want to do this. And so the, the characters in the book end up creating and inventing things that are that are beneficial for everybody mm-hmm. even though you had this selfish motive within yourself mm-hmm. you know so when they asked her you know why are you doing this yada 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 and she came out and, you know he's like oh you're trying to help your fellow man and all this he's like she's like nah I want to make money I'm trying to make money you know and, and so it was like oh this is a terrible motive but then the, the, the repercussions of it were good so the point is like it's it's overly simplistic. This is kind of like break with Buddhism a little bit. To me, it's over simplistic to say that your miseries are rooted in your attachment to the material world. I think that that's I think that's the central tenet, one of the tenets of Buddhism. I'm not very sure because Buddhism isn't my thing. But it seems to be that they're diagnosing the main problem is that you are. Uh, I said desire. You you are you have desires yeah. that are attached to the material world, and because of that, that's that's a, that's the nexus of all of your misery. So if you could detach yourself from things in this material world, um, then you could attain liberation or whatever. And you'd have to you can get off the 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 karma cycle and, and all that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure that I agree with that because mankind's dissatisfaction has also been responsible for things like jet propulsion and, and email and, and things of that nature. So it's like, I can't characterize it always as being a bad thing. I think one of the things in our, in our culture is that if something makes us feel bad, then automatically it is bad. So, like, you have a certain misery that comes with desire, and so, like, because people are like, well, if a person feels miserable, that can't be right. So let's let's get to the root of misery and, and get rid of that. It's like, well, wait a second. Um, maybe mm. misery is important. <laughs> maybe misery is important to feel, and maybe we should not be going through life trying to avoid 
misery. Maybe maybe misery is an intentional part of the human experience. Yeah. Um, because as you know, people talk when about I stay trying to avoid it. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yeah. So like, yeah, we, no, it's true. So if somebody wasn't miserable about being stuck on the earth and not being able to fly, I mean, those right brother, I mean, they they put their lives on the line. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's how miserable they were. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. I, I, I don't think misery is like what fuels invention. But what I'm saying is, like, anybody that we admire has an affliction of some sort. But Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, anybody that's done anything significant in the world has some sort of disorder where it's just never enough for them, and that's why they become so good. Um, and you know. They generally don't have good personal lives. Michael Jordan, like, terrible reputation among his teammates. You know, like, Tom, great reputation among his teammates. Lost Giselle, which in my view, in my view, losing Giselle was, uh, was, uh, was, I don't, I don't know if he'll ever recover from that. So, like, and, and it, it definitely, she like, was, she was so good. Staying it definitely him. changed the way I looked at him, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like. I, I yeah. truly, truly like admire. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I admire, dude. I loved him. You you brought him up all the time. It seemed like he was always in your analogies. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And then after all of that, you were like, yo. Yeah, that was it for me. Yeah. That was it. And it's it's crazy. Like, dude went from like being, and you know, this is one of the problems with me, I guess. But dude went from being like like a superhero to literally like if I saw him in the street I, I genuinely do not know if I didn't say anything to him yeah. it's not because I'm mad at him I'm not whatever it's just like damn bro mm-hmm. like I cannot imagine first of all I can't imagine a woman like being that like steady with somebody and like down for them like for that long and then not showing her like look boom you're like the number one priority here like the, the misery that he had of, like, not winning that next Super Bowl was just more important to him than the happiness that he had with what was right in front of him. Like, that's just crazy to me. Because, like, you can't take that for granted. Like, you, you get you get shorty that's, like, going to be there and, like, support you and support your agenda to the degree that she did. Like, that, to just piss that away for, for something as ridiculous as, like, a nine-pound trophy, to me, is insane. Um... But yeah, I, I, yeah. So that's what, like the dichotomy of the song. Like on the one hand, it's like, yeah, like wanting something that you can't have, whether it's a dead person, you know, you definitely can't have, or a person in another relationship that you're probably never gonna have. Like, it creates a lot of misery. But that misery might put you. It might be like, like what if Shorty said, "Hey, you're like you're seventy pounds overweight, so like we can't be together." That misery might put dude in the gym, and that might add ten years to his life. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? So like. Wanting what you can't have is, like, the best and the worst of the human experience. Like, literally, like, it creates wars, and it also creates spaceships. And so, it, it's hard to take an overly... Sim- That's what I'm saying, like, with the Buddhism thing. I'm like, yo, it, it's hard for me to take an overly simplistic view philosophically on what's going on. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, the song is a, a, a 9.2 for me. You did not come at the last song. We have more. We do. We have more. Um, Shout out to Vitamin Pete, whoever Vitamin Pete is. This is a good one. I'm going to give this one a 9.7. Um, hey, what are your opinion about listening and singing satanic songs like Hulk Clavicondio from Ghost? 